Hello YouTube, this is Wobble Rocket. Today we are playing Striving for Light Survival. We're gonna go with the Unknown Wander, and I think we're gonna pick a melee build this time. We're gonna go with Greatsword, and let's grab the Throwing Axes. We're gonna go with Scattering Hit, Explosive Hit, We'll probably drop the poison shot because we're not really needing that as much. Um, we probably won't take meteor blow, but Clash of Steel is definitely one of my favorite abilities, so we will be keeping that. Bursting shot and bursting wield are both fantastic. Uh, probably not swirl this time. Definitely keeping scattering projectiles, bleeding swirl, flood, and fragmentation. And then we're gonna go with um, burning projectiles, exploding dodge, and projectile multiplicator just to kind of round things out a little bit. Let's try out the Eternal Sands map because I haven't tried that one yet. If you are not familiar with this game, this is an action roguelite. Sort of similar to uh, Vampire Survivors, but with a Path of Exile style passive uh, skill tree that we'll show in just a second with some unique changes. This is the, uh, the skill tree for striving for light, striving for light survival. Um, as you progress through the skill tree, new random nodes open up and so your tree is different every single time that you play uh, which provides quite a bit of replayability we're going to go ahead and grab our increased melee damage um, grab a little bit of increased health and we'll take scattering hit great we have already unlocked the brand new ability, Explosive Hit. Each run of this game lasts about 20 minutes. attack speed the art style in this game is a little unconventional but honestly it has really started to grow on me um, I love the different creature designs um, everything has sort of a hand-drawn quality to it that uh, is very nice in my opinion Experience, light fragments that you don't pick up end up getting converted into additional elite enemies the next round which has its benefits because uh, they tend to drop a lot more experience grab some more attack speed and I think we're gonna start pathing towards these um, our blades and then our projectile multiplier This build, I'm going a lot more melee focused, so projectiles won't be a, uh, a huge concern for us, but there's just something always satisfying about filling the entire screen with projectiles everywhere. Flash of Steel, Projectile Multiplier. That is a very big worm. Whoa.
not entirely clear on where the hitbox is on that, uh, that giant worm. It seems like there's a couple spots that not actually doing any damage to. It may just be the head. All right, let's start ramping up attack speed. These bugs are surprisingly fast. Um, this character does okay with the move speed, but there's a couple others that have slower move speed and I always end up getting clipped by them. Especially if I haven't grabbed any of the move speed nodes. Alright, let's grab a double hit. Nope, we can't grab double hit. It's not connected yet. Um... Let's do explosive hit and more moves or more attack speed. There have been so many games come out in this action roguelite uh, genre this year. Largely due to the success of Vampire Survivors, uh, but it's it's interesting to see the different twists that each developer takes on it. Uh, the randomized expanding passive tree is something that I haven't seen in any other game, and I really really enjoy it in this one. just adds so much uh, replayability to the game because every single run is different. Um, you never quite know what you're going to get. We're going to re-roll this health since we already have quite a bit. Grab Bursting Wield and increase melee damage. We may grab that um, increase collect range node that just popped up as well. I'm really hoping for another one of the uh, another one of the blades, and then hopefully we can start getting some increased AOE um, nodes coming up pretty soon. Grab increased collect range. And reroll the health on that again. I think we already have scattering hit, yeah. Increase attack speed, and we'll probably end up rerolling that double hit as well. You have to watch because um, certain nodes will actually drop your attack speed, and if you stack too many of them, it can put you in a bad position. You can actually um, enable and disable nodes, however, so if you accidentally take something and you don't like the way it's changing your gameplay, you can actually disable it, although you do not reclaim the uh, skill point that you spent on it. This has really become one of my favorite uh, games in this genre lately. I've been playing it uh, pretty extensively. In fact, you can uh, check an entire playlist of my gameplay videos for Striving for Light Survival. Uh, there'll be a link at the end of this video. Whoa. This is my first time playing uh, this particular map, so I'm not totally familiar with the patterns at this point. Obviously, the uh, the big moth guy that shoots out all these projectiles is a little tricky. He probably wouldn't be so difficult with a projectile build, but since we're going mostly full melee on this one, we're struggling a bit. Okay, let's grab this health over here. He got me again. Dang it. All right, 
let's knowing that we have those guys I do think we might start picking up some projectile nodes um, let's go for additional projectiles Ground. Oh, I still have one more. And let's, let's just go ahead and take the health so we can get towards scattering projectiles. All right, great. Two hearts right off the bat of this round. This is wave 11. Uh, usually there's 20 waves per map. So we're slightly over halfway done. But the game will start ramping up pretty soon. Our damage is pretty respectable right now. I would like to pick up another uh, melee damage node if we can if we can grab one. So we're gonna grab bleeding squirrel just because it it tends to create a pretty nice buffer around us. Um, that sort of chews away at enemy health whenever I'm not positioned in a spot where I can get my sword on them. You see how many projectiles that it um, sends spinning around us. That provides a uh, damage over time tick, a bleeding effect. Big turtle, okay. Has a massive AoE on him. He did not have as much health as I thought he was going to have. some more attack speed then we'll probably path up to that projectile multiplier up there as well So far, the Sands map actually seems a little bit easier than the Forest map before it. So this game is actually a spin-off of Striving for Light, which is an action RPG roguelite that has less of the uh, the timed round style of gameplay. I have not actually played the original Striving for Light. I've only played the uh, survival mode. Um, I'm not really sure what was the decision for turning it into um, a separate game rather than just an additional mode in the original game. Maybe there's um, enough of a 
gameplay difference that they wouldn't have been compatible. I gotta be a little bit more proactive with dodging. just as the timer ran out. Great. Okay. Damage, attack speed, and damage. Great. That is going to really help us out. There we go. Alright, let's go grab this heart real quick. weapons, unlockable characters, uh, and unlockable skills for this game. And I really like the, um, the tiered system that each of the maps has because the difficulty ramps up in a really great way. Right, let's um, grab another projectile multiplier, so that's going to help out quite a bit. Yeah, the gameplay ramps up quite a bit in, in the higher difficulties um, for each map. I don't know if there's an endless mode to this game. I really kind of hope that there is, um, or if there's not, hopefully the developers will add one in the future. Um, the game is still, I believe, in early access. Its uh, current version is... 0 0.99.9.0, 0, I believe, as of the time of this recording. You'd like to see more uh, action roguelite gameplay videos like this, or you'd like to check out some of my uh, Minecraft work as, work as well, uh, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm a fairly new YouTuber and I'm just getting started with uh, recording uh, my video game progress. You may notice that some of my uh, initial videos are coming out in a, a couple of different formats. I'm just kind of playing around trying to see what I like best and what works best. Trying to learn as much as I can about recording gameplay videos and trying to make this channel the best that I can. I'd love to have your support on that journey. that we've grabbed. We've got quite a few throwing axes coming out now. Um, and even though we haven't grabbed any damage nodes for our projectiles, we're really... they're really adding a, a sizable portion to our damage. All right, so I think what we're gonna do, we are gonna path up this way, grab these two melee damage nodes, work towards that increased area effect, and yet another projectile multiplier. Um, 
So let's start working on that. We're gonna reroll this a couple times and see what we get. Increased attack speed is always great. You know, I'm not a huge fan of critical hit. Um, I haven't noticed that it does much without investing a lot into it. So we're gonna skip the critical hit nodes at this time. One of these days I may uh, play around and see if I can do a crit focus build, maybe with a very high uh, attack speed weapon. Uh, something like the dagger, which has a thrusting motion. There are a couple of skills which also allow you to build a uh, sort of like a pet build. Um, the, the default skill adds some wolves, but I've noticed that there's also an unlockable weapon that adds uh, spider companions that you can grab. And there's a number of nodes that um, increase their damage and I think maybe their movement speed. Uh, so I'm really interested to play that at some point. That's a play style I haven't really experimented with, especially in this style of game. You don't see um, pets or summoners uh, as a common style of play. All right, so we just grabbed our two melee damage nodes and we are going to keep working our way through this tree until we get to that. Oh, no, we're already at the boss, so we will not have time for that. Let's see how this goes. Does not seem like we've been uh, two minutes into this game, or, or 20 minutes into this round already. Although we are actually at 22 minutes at this point. I should probably be paying attention to the boss and not paying attention to my OBS. Seems the uh, strategy on this guy is to kind of kite beside him. Um, the head seems to be the only portion that actually takes damage, and getting right in front of him is definitely a bad idea. So let's not do that again. Just like we just did. Alright, Bleak Worm is down. And that means we have unlocked another tier of the sand. We've also unlocked the Frozen Plains map. Great. All right, so let's go for another run. We're gonna pull up, I think we're gonna stick with melee. I really liked the way that performed, but we're gonna swap over to the hammer tonight. Uh, let's see about if there's any changes we wanna make to our skill tree. Hmm. You know what, I think we're gonna grab the um, the wolf companion this time. I don't know that we'll do a whole lot with him, but I just like to see how he performs. I've never actually used the wolf companion. And let's swap over to the ice staff because I haven't used that weapon very frequently yet. We're going to go ahead and check out the brand new Frozen Plains map that we just unlocked. We'll go back later in, later on and fill in the uh, higher difficulties of the Eternal Sands map. I like to call these things unicorn snails because that's kind of what they make me think of. I don't know if the uh, developers have official names for the different creatures, but that's what I call them. Uh, it's empowered companions, but we don't have the actual one. So we're going to go with uh, projectile multiplier, and we're going to go ahead and grab some increased attack speed as well.
We'll grab Fragmentation, which will cause um, defeated enemies to spew out projectiles towards other enemies. So that's going to be something that I think will help us out quite a bit. We'll go ahead and grab um, Clash of Steel. And that's all we've got. Increase attack speed, grab that explosive hit. Striving for light survival is up there with, uh, Rogue Genesia and Rotato as some of my favorite action roguelike games. I really didn't expect this one to, to be as enjoyable as I did. Uh, I picked it up on a whim, um, not really expecting much out of it. But it has really, really um, stolen my attention, I think. If you're wondering why I just ran into that, I actually wasn't sure if the rectangular sections were damaging nodes or if they were like unpassable walls. Um, they are damaging node or damaging fields, and I feel like they probably would have been actually a little bit more mechanically interesting if they were um, were walls. They almost have sort of a rocky texture to them. All right, let's grab uh, increased area of effect. And we'll go ahead and path up this way so we can grab that increased melee damage and some more increased attack speed. I have found that regardless of the weapon that you use, attack speed seems to be um, one of the more important nodes to grab in this game. The slower weapons do deal quite a bit more damage. Uh, in fact, the hammer is one of the slowest weapons that I've encountered thus far. I think the Elder Club might be a little bit slower. Um, and the base damage is, is very great and it, it scales well with the increased melee damage nodes, but um, without some increased attack speed, it's very, very difficult to progress through the game. We're gonna increase damage on our fragmentation and go ahead and uh, I think we're gonna grab this incle increased collect range. Oh yeah, we're definitely gonna path down this way and grab Increase melee damage, increase attack speed, melee damage, and then that scattering projectiles at the end. Um, the great thing about scattering projectiles is it should interact properly with fragmentation, uh, which means that we have the potential for some chaining to start happening, especially when enemies are packed up close. They will, each of them will spew out four projectiles, which will then have the opportunity to chain into other enemies. for increased melee attack speed and then at the end of this next round we should be able to grab scattering projectiles and that other increased melee damage
the game is under active development in fact a um a new patch dropped just today which added some uh, performance in increases which has been nice because the last couple times that i've played once you get to some of the higher waves you do seem to uh experience quite a few um, quite a bit of jerkiness um, but it seems like the upgrades to the physics engine have helped with that quite a bit Surprised that the um, the monster density in this map is not very high. Of course, we are still on tier one, so um, typically the monster density increases rapidly. Okay, so we've grabbed another one of those. We're gonna go for. Um, we'll increase our bursting wheel damage, and then grab that other clash of steel, so we get that. 100% chance for Clash of Steel. Izimuth. Are there not 20 waves in each map? Maybe this one only has fewer. I'm not exactly sure what. It doesn't show us what wave we're on. if he was the end boss of the map or not but that was shockingly easy I guess we'll find out in about 16 or 17 seconds I could just also be really bad at math and not know how many. Yeah, see, we've only done 10 of 20 waves. So he must have just been a, uh, a mini boss that pops up in the middle of that map. Clash of Steel, increased area of effect, and yet another increased melee damage. I keep seeing the uh, Empowered Companions node, but I actually have not encountered the node that actually gives you the wolf companion so we may not end up with our wolf this match at all I really like the crabs attack speed we have actually not taken any uh, increased health nodes this tournament around and so far we haven't seemed like we've really needed them um, the lower monster density in the frozen lands here has not really made the additional damage super necessary most of the time when I end up taking damage in this game it's because there's so much activity on screen, there's so many monsters and my own projectiles and their projectiles that it's very easy to get lost in all the visual noise. super interested in but we will go ahead and grab fragmentation and 
Uh, it's not going to do a whole lot, but we'll grab burning projectiles just because. Let's see what we want to grab next. I need more rerolls. Okay, we'll take that increased attack speed. We'll go ahead and grab some increased movement speed. Uh, it'll help with dodging, particularly as we get into the later levels of the wave. through something. attack speed and increase melee damage ouch okay this guy shoots out a ton of projectiles all at once so we're gonna have to be a little careful about him this guy may make me uh yep yeah, i may regret not picking up those health nodes I do wish that fewer of the enemy projectiles were that red color because it's very difficult sometimes to recognize it uh, in the midst of everything else. We'll grab increased projectile damage and increase attack speed again. Particularly when you have big explosion effects like that, it's it's very easy for red projectiles to get lost in the middle of them. on this hammer though We're pretty much uh, one hitting the vast majority of the enemies in this map right now yeah see clipped right into another one of those red projectiles all right increased damage 
Um, hmm. We'll do attack speed. We may path down this way and do a couple of rerolls. You know, we've gotten this far. I really want to see if I can get through this whole map without grabbing any health nodes. Um, it's not something I've done yet, but... That is a big unicorn snail. more movement speed. We should be coming up on the uh, the end of the Frozen Lands pretty soon, I think. We'll be on wave 18, I think. Ooh, we need to grab some health. Yep, starting wave 19 next. So, we need to start finalizing our setup here. Um, bursting Yield. Okay, so we'll hit this map and then we can grab another increased melee damage and attack speed and if we're lucky additional projectiles before we face the final boss. see another one of the uh, large diamond shaped monsters that spewed out so many projectiles we'll either encounter them sometime during this wave or sometime during the next might be the next all right so we've got two we're gonna grab increased melee damage and increase attack speed all right we're facing iron frost he's a big old boy Seems like he has some uh, charge effects and a very large AOE, Frost Nova. Okay. It's hard to get close to. There we go. Bunch of projectiles. That AOE. Whoa. Come on. Almost got him. It's damage there.
There we go. Iron Frost down. Unlock skill Life Leech and unlock the Mountain Peaks. All right. Let's change things up a little bit. I think we're going to go for a projectile based build this time. Um, let's grab bow and yeah, we'll try dagger. Okay, so we're going to change things up. We're going to pick swirl. We're going to drop um, Flood. Mm. Definitely going to grab Life Leech. We'll go ahead and drop the Wolf Companion since we never were able to actually pick one up. Glaring Light scales with projectile damage, so that might be an interesting one to pick up. But the attack speed decreases by half, and I'm not sure that I'm really keen on that. Um, poison chat. I think we'll leave it off. All right. We're going to check out the mountain peaks. So the difference between the male and the female unknown wander is that the uh, male unknown wander deals 20% extra melee damage and 20% less range damage. And for the female unknown wander, uh, those numbers are inverted, so she does more damage with ranged and slightly less with melee. Okay, so we're going to grab Scattering Projectiles. Uh, I do want Swirl, but I think we're going to wait until we get some more projectiles going. So we're going to grab uh, Bursting Wield, and then we'll path up to both of these additional projectile nodes. Hopefully we'll luck out and we can get some... Uh, multipliers pretty soon. I could have taken the um, the Elder Club. It has a built-in projectile multiplier, which would have been really good for this build. Um, but I've never played with the dagger, so we're just experimenting at this point. All right, grab a couple more of those. We'll probably hit Bursting Shot and then grab at least one of these move speed nodes here. Grab some increased attack speed down some of these other wings and we'll see what other things unlock on our tree. The bow packs together pretty tightly, so we might even look into grabbing a couple of the increased uh, projectile angle. I'm not actually sure how the projectile angle interacts with the swirl node. Um, in fact, angle might be useless once we pick that up. I'm really not sure. All right, increase attack speed or movement speed. Yeah, there we go. Reach four projectiles at the end of wave four. We've unlocked the exploding projectile. these guys when they get too close. Tell you that worm is a lot easier with uh, ranged weapons than he is with melee.
Okay. Other additional projectiles. We just grabbed a bunch of increased attack speed. So we're going to turn this wanderer into a regular machine gun with these arrows. right into him. I didn't even really need to dash right there. Get good, Wobble. Get good. Okay. Projectile range and speed. Projectile damage. There we go. You know, I was thinking about grabbing Swirl because it uh, really fills the game field with projectiles, but I'm really liking the shotgun effect that happens here with the bow and its tight clusters, so we may actually end up just sticking with that. I'm not sure yet. Okay. Tell you what, we will go ahead and grab the max health and then we'll go for another increased projectile damage. Projectile damage. <clears throat> RNG is not being super nice to us because we haven't grabbed... Yeah, we don't even have a single multiplier on the board yet. Um, do we already have... Yeah, we already have that. Um, I don't want to ruin my shotgun effect. Grab that increased attack speed. There we go. Okay, we'll grab a couple of the uh, increased max health and bursting shot here.
That's a big spider. I love the uh, diversity of enemy attacks that this game has. Um, quite a few of the enemies have their own attack patterns and that makes it uh, a little bit more interesting than some of the other action roguelike games that are pretty popular out there where you just end up facing endless hordes of enemies that although they may have different sprites or different appearances they all just have the same path directly to the player kind of uh, AI Projectile speed in this game has any effect on damage. I don't believe it does. Um, some games, projectile speed increases the damage that you deal. Um, and in fact, in Path of Exile, which is obviously one of the influences uh, of this game and the action RPG that it's based off of, um, in Path of Exile, projectile speed actually does have an effect on your damage. But from what I can tell, it doesn't seem like it increases damage in this game. If I'm wrong about that, uh, definitely hop into the comments and correct me, please. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think we're going to pick Swirl. As much as I was interested in doing it, I think, um, I think we'll stay away from it this time because I'm really liking the shotgun effect. I do really wish that we could pick up a... Uh, a multiplier though and I still have not seen any on this on this map um, so we're just gonna go for another health node and yeah we'll just keep going for health nodes until we get something better that's a big crab and he's pretty fast You know, I might want to grab one or two more of the uh, movement speed nodes that we've run across. If we don't get anything better after this map, I'll definitely grab a couple of those. So far, they seem to be the most effective thing on our map, other than grabbing more health nodes that we really don't need. gonna get a multiplier anywhere probably not nope still no multiplier oh well but we unlock scattering dodge for the most part there seems to be an unlock for just about every uh, growable stat that you can get in the game uh, so there's different weapons or skills that unlock for Certain thresholds of melee damage, certain thresholds of number of projectiles, certain thresholds of projectile speed, um, including things like condition damage, and um, I think there's even a few skills that unlock if you carry several uh, skills of the same type. So like you can get explosions on your projectiles, explosions on your melee weapon, and explosions on your dodge. And if you grab all three of those, then you can end up with uh, some modifications. Okay, we're gonna grab increased attack speed. Um, hmm. Try to reroll this. Attack speed. We'll go for another attack speed and then hit area of effect. And 
then we'll probably end up re-rolling critical hit and go for additional projectiles. And that's a cool attack pattern. Got that tic-tac-toe thing going on. wave is 15 so we are progressing through this uh this map at a pretty hefty pace let's grab that additional projectiles we'll go ahead and see if we can re-roll this critical hit into something that we might actually want to grab nope not yet that is a very big guy and that means his attack range is going to be huge if he uses his hands in the same way that the smaller forms of him do. Maybe we can kill him before he does it. Wow. <laughs> With that movement speed, our dash is ridiculous. Dashing like a quarter of the way across the map at this point. There he goes. Oh, yeah, he hit me. I knew he was going to. I knew it was going to clip me. That's okay, though, because we have not had the RNG that we wanted on the map, so we've picked up a whole bunch of uh, health nodes, so that really didn't hurt us that much. wave 15 with a bow equipped and we have unlocked the throwing spear that might be a fun one to play around with okay let's see increased attack speed we'll go ahead and take that extra max health because why the hell not and then we'll go for additional projectiles It does not look like we're going to end up getting a multiplier anytime in this run, so that's a little disappointing, but I'm still loving the shotgun effect of all these arrows firing out all at once. Between it, uh, fragmentation, and scattering shot, we are doing pretty well with coverage even for larger packs. Okay, let's see what we want to get now. Grab some more speed and range. Our range is pretty fantastic at this point. Um, and I do believe you can hit enemies off screen. Uh, so that's. Definitely a positive of grabbing so many of the range and speed nodes. I don't know if you can hear it over my mic, but there is a little bit of thunder. Uh, rolling around outside. We have had storms after storms after storms 
uh, in my local area for the last several weeks. At least two weeks now. Okay. Um, you know, I was going to grab Life Leech, but with as many health nodes as we have, I don't think we really need it. Um... Yeah, we're going to continue pathing down this way and see if we can kick up these two increased damage nodes and possibly Bleeding Squirrel as well, just because it should add a lot of blades to us, considering how many projectiles we have right now. second down there we go okay we'll grab fragmentation increased damage and we can actually grab another fragmentation in just a little while depending on how many points we manage to get off of this we are coming up to the end of this map Heading into our final map. Uh, let's see, we'll grab Bleeding Swirl and increase projectile for this round. And I'm disappointed that we were never able to get any of our projectile multipliers, but honestly, we haven't needed them that badly. Um, and you see the sheer number of projectiles that Bleeding Swirl is, is pumping out because of our uh, massive shotgun of arrows from our bow um, i've actually forgotten that we are even carrying a melee weapon at this point our dagger has been all but useless this round but i suppose that's the way a good projectile build should be you should not have to use your per your melee weapon very much if you are focused entirely on building your projectiles up all right you have been watching me play striving for light survival by Igniting Spark Games. If you have enjoyed this video, I hope that you will like and subscribe. My name is Wobble Rocket. And in about 20 seconds, we will come to the end of our journey together today. Look for more videos from Striving for Light Survival and other action roguelike games coming very soon to my YouTube channel. There we go.